How's everybody doing today? Day two of our deck safety demonstration. Uh, my name is Scott Fisher and I'm a structural engineer here with Simpson Strong Tide. Today I'd like to discuss how you can make sure your decks are safe and code compliant. We're going to talk deck safety and then we're going to collapse this unsafe deck. Well, as we get started here, I'd first like to share something with you that I read while preparing for our presentation. The article I was reading talked about the idea that statistics reported by deck experts say that decks cause more injuries and loss of life than any other part of the home structure. That's pretty alarming. What we want to do is we want to try to help make decks be enjoyable extensions of your home where you can relax with friends and family with the comfort of knowing you're being supported by a safe, properly built structure. Well, how many of you just have a deck yourself? Yeah, a lot of us do. There are actually about 40 million decks in America. But about half of those decks are not built to building code standards, which could lead to collapse. So since 2003, there have been thousands of deck-related injuries, and unfortunately many deaths as a result of deck failure. Now we know that deck collapses are preventable, and it's our job to make sure that they're built properly. So behind me here we have two roughly eight foot wide by six foot deep by seven foot tall decks. They look kind of similar, but one is code compliant, and the other one, as we can hopefully see, has a few problems. So the first warning sign that we typically like to look for is loose connections, right? You're walking up the steps of your deck, maybe you've got some wobbly railings, you've got those loose stairs, you maybe even have a ledger that's loose. The bottom line here, if you have any loose connections, probably goes without saying you just want to secure those connections. The next warning sign is missing or improper connections. Oftentimes those loose connections will lead to the missing or improper connections. Now if your deck is raised up like this, although no, I'm not going to go underneath it, you should go underneath your deck and check to see if you have all the proper hardware. Oftentimes we see fasteners and we, we see improper connections. We see the top of a post not put together with a post cap. Like I mentioned before, sometimes you'll see the ledger not put together properly. Probably goes without saying that if you're using proper connectors and fasteners, you're going to get a much better load carrying capacity. So if you find that you're missing or have improper connectors, just go ahead and add them, okay? One of the most common failures we see is when that ledger connection falls away from the home. If all goes well, that's the type of failure we're going to see here today. And I'm going to ask everybody just to be aware, maybe take a step back, the guys have finished prepping. Um, before we collapse, I do want to mention, for any more info on any of our connectors, obviously we know we can always go on strongtie.com, and also we do have our dealer locator app that you can get for your smartphone, your phone's app store. All right, we are ready. I'm gonna hide over here. I need you guys to help me with the three, two, one countdown, all right? And in three, two, something else. All right, just real quickly, I'll just talk about what we saw. Obviously, the ledger went down, the back house, house end of the deck fell down, the post went flipping out, and obviously everything on top of the deck went every which way. Now, these are the reasons why we want you to know the five warning signs, why we want you to know the key connections, and also what we talk about in our deck connection fastening guide. And in closing, just remember it's important to know it's attached to your heart, and then you'll inspect your deck and help keep you and your family safe.